So if we want to have a sustainable society in which everybody's needs are equitably met within the ecological limits of the planet, we have to change the, the way the economy is set up. So it's basically because the economy is so problematic right now that we're having a lot of the sustainability crises that we're seeing. We run out of resources, we drive climate change, we drive biodiversity loss, um, people are exploited in the process. A lot of those are driven by the, the economic system we have now. So the model I've been working on for the past 10 years or so is we call it the not-for-profit world model. And it's basically a model of a not-for-profit market economy. So in the for-profit way of organizing the economy, which is the way that the economy is organized in most of the world right now, um, the purpose of economic institutions like businesses and banks and financial institutions is to enrich their owners to seek financial gain for private investors and owners. Um, and so that's one of the key purposes embedded in these institutions. A not-for-profit market economy, on the other hand, would have the key purpose of uh, social benefit, of meeting people's needs and even meeting environmental needs. Um, and so that, that difference in purpose really changes the, the structure of the economy and accordingly the, the outcomes and the consequences of the economy. We would have much more equality in a not-for-profit type of economy because we wouldn't have private owners accumulating wealth from businesses and we wouldn't have the built-in incentive to keep wages low. Um, there wouldn't be a built-in incentive to expand consumption and production constantly to, to deliver profit to owners. Um, there wouldn't be the incentive to um, change policies in order to enrich private owners, right? So it would align much, much better with redistributional taxes and environmental protection regulations and regulations to protect workers, for instance. So um, it could actually serve to solve a lot of the problems that we're facing today in a very systemic way by changing the goal and structure of the economy. And so it would be a market that is selling goods and services to meet people's needs. Um, but again, needs can be fulfilled. So there's this ethic of enough. There's a constant sort of monitoring of the needs and challenges in the community and whether people have enough or not. So once we have enough, maybe we don't have to produce more goods and services. Maybe we don't have to sell more stuff. We can sort of have this steady state economy or even a you know a shrinking economy if we've sort of gone too far you know we're living in a world where there are a handful of billionaires they have yachts and private jets and several homes and even private islands while we have um i think the last time i looked at the statistic it was 800 million people who aren't even having their basic nutritional needs met and so, I mean, it's very easy to see that that needs to be redistributed. We need, you know, people don't need yachts and private jets and more than one home. So there's, we've got to have a, a massive redistribution of wealth. And then the, um, the not-for-profit world or the not-for-profit market economy can keep uh, the flow of resources moving in a... Um, circular way rather than accumulating in the, the hands of a few, um, directed again by where there is need. So all of the profit goes to where are their needs, wh who needs this profit, who can benefit most from this. Um, so the, the market again it, uh, becomes a distributional mechanism. YHA in the, in the UK, which is this hostile association, is a not-for-profit business and so it runs these hostels it takes fees for the hostels and the accommodation it provides and all of the profit goes into helping kids in the city get out of the city and um, experience nature and that is a not-for-profit business that has been successful and going on uh, i think for like 85 years or something um, so you get these kinds of examples of of not-for-profit business is sort of against all odds in this for-profit economy that can be quite ruthless, doing quite well. So if we can you know, raise awareness and bring more support for them, I think that this transition is actually quite feasible.
The first one is sort of the softer level of raising awareness and building up social momentum. So we should have discussions about this, uh, about the not-for-profit world economy, about alternative economic models, um, and we should spread the information, raise awareness, have these discussions, create social momentum. Because the more social momentum we have, the more we can pressure economic actors and policymakers to move in the direction that we need them to. The second thing is to, to push for those policy changes. So to um, take away the, uh, the unfair advantages that large for-profit companies currently enjoy, sort of the subsidies that they get. Um, they are often prioritized in public procurement policies. Um, we can instead flip that to prioritize or favor not-for-profit forms of business. Um, Governments can, can put funding into helping start up not-for-profit businesses and support existing ones. So that's sort of like the policy level. And the third one is to support existing not-for-profit efforts because there are already a lot of not-for-profit businesses that already exist. There are a lot of social entrepreneurs that would like to start not-for-profit types of business, but they're not sure if they can or how they can. Um, so we, we can support them by um, identifying them, mapping out the not-for-profit businesses in our communities, um, shifting our consumption to support them wherever we can, um, and you know, working for them, maybe even volunteering with them and raising awareness about them.